but it's not making sense. She said, by the time you have a seven, eight year old um, in this generation, it's almost like you are raising an early teenager. So you saw, <laughs> and I was just like, huh? What does that even mean? Like eight year old, which kind of teenager? But I promise you my eight year old speaks like a teenager. I'm just sometimes so, so spooked out. I'm like, what? What does she even know, right? Just this morning, she said she wanted to have a conversation with me on behalf of her siblings. And she was like fighting for everybody that, you know, she didn't like how I said something. I'm like, ah, hello, I was already a grown woman before you were born. You don't understand. Like, what do you, <laughs> what do you know about? <laughs> but yeah, the conversations are different. The prayers are different. Their questions are different. The answers they want are different. And it's just those evolution of seasons that also shape how I reorganize my time, right? In, in terms of how I invest in being present and delineating my, my schedule to reflect my desire to spend more time with them. And then even in the learning contents that I put into the time we spend together, right? My, my daughter doesn't want to watch, you know, just one Bible story now. She wants to have like serious conversation very serious conversation about God, about Trinity, about how one person will now be three people. I should break it down. So sometimes I'll just be like, wait for your daddy. Your daddy is a pastor. Just wait a bit more. <laughs> when he comes, we can have the conversation. Just kidding. But to say that the recognition of seasons have been a game uh, changer for me because it is what I sense the Lord is putting a highlight on that I also choose to put a highlight on. What you find is if you focus on the things God wants you to focus on in different seasons, when a new season opens up and God is calling your attention more to something else, your other balls are not going to drop in that sense because you now have infrastructure carrying you know, those seasons. Do you understand? So when I'm in a book writing season, which is something I'm just getting out of, right? Um, my husband would be like, yeah, I can let you be because I know that when you are done and you're not doing all this overnight parole, I have you to myself because I keep making it, uh, you know, good, very good investments in the seasons where I am not, um, I am, I, I don't have to be up at night writing or working on a project. And it's almost like the law of investment, the law of kindness and investment. So because of the way you treat a season, um, you know, and the demands of that time, when you have to evolve into a new season, that is just a temporary window of opportunity that God is harnessing for you, then those around you can understand. Do you see what I mean here? So seasons are definitely so important. I don't even look like I'm doing a lot of things, but I'm not necessarily doing a lot of things. It's the structure that I put in different things that continue to speak for themselves when I have to zoom in and focus more on one thing in a particular season. Um, can I also just say this from the point of view of not necessarily things, but also being, right? And what I mean with that is sometimes God is highlighting a season you're in, and it's not about in this season I want you to uh, work on this project or in this season I want you to focus on ministry it's sometimes in this season I want you to pay attention to this about yourself right I want you to pay attention to your heart I want you to pay attention to more time in prayer I want you to pay attention to greater submission to your spouse I want you to pay attention to giving more sacrificially and if you honor the father's nudgings in the different seasons of your life those things are usually like seeds you're sowing that will help you enter into a new season with power and with victory. And it would always almost look like there's no gap happening in your life, like you're, in, you're just on this upward moving trajectory, but it is God who's leading you face by face, um, you know, by his leadership. The third thing um, that I want to say is the power of the right structures. If you are a multi-influential woman, God is laying different demands on you. He's asking you to, you know, pursue a path or work on something and you still have to be a wife and a lover and you have, because it's not enough to be a wife, you've got to be a lover too. And you have to grow your dexterity. 
I don't know, the thing is pushing me in that place, but I will just try to stay here, right? But you have to be a wife and a lover. Some people are very excellent with caring for the home, cooking great meals, keeping everywhere clean, but they're not great lovers. They don't know how to have conversations that take your husband to a place nobody else can take him, right? And you know, intimacy is on different levels. There is sexual intimacy, there's spiritual intimacy, there's emotional intimacy, there's intellectual intimacy, right? And all five levels of intimacy are the things that come together um, to make you a team, right? And make you, um, yeah, makes you a great lover, right? Yeah. So just, just as an aside, anyway, structures are powerful. Just yesterday, I was with a very beloved mentor of mine, and she said something I thought was enormously profound. She said, Debola, in every generation, there are usually very gifted people. But she said it doesn't, she said being extremely gifted is meaningless. It doesn't matter that you're multi-talented, multi-passionate, super smart. She said it's nothing. She said those who thrive in every generation are those who can build a structure around the giftings of God in their lives. Boom! I thought, yay! <laughs> you know, I thought, let's just bring offering baskets. It is now time to sow. Like, it was too good. And it was, it was just such a highlighting moment again because it's one of the things the Lord kept saying to me this year. I came into this year and he said it's a year to consolidate structure. Right. Let me tell you what structure does. Structure is what allows you do the work of God from the point, um, from the um, from the realm of rest. Structure is what allows you do God's work from the point of rest. People can do God ordained work, and I'm not even talking about ministry or pulpit work. I'm just saying God gives you a purpose. People can pursue their God given purpose and be burnt out doing it. For real, right? So if purpose is going to produce peace and prosperity, structure is the middle ground. Structure is everything. It's the secret that makes even those who don't have a great relationship with God build a literal empire that has capacity to outlive them and leave a legacy. And since so many of you that are in this call are Africans, then the conversation is really for us. What has been handed to us from the, you know, from previous generations of fathers um, who are Africans is just an inability to build for legacy, right? And that is why they burn out and pass on and it's gone. That does God and his kingdom no good. <laughs> I'm telling you, what God wants to build through you is transgenerational. And that's why scripture says that a righteous man, he leaves a legacy of wealth for his children and his children's children. And that's not even speaking about biologically alone, but the next generation and the next generation and the next generation. And a legacy of wealth is not just money in the bank. A legacy of wealth is the gift of men and the gifts of men. A legacy of wealth is, you know, a transgenerational transfer of intellectual prowess, spiritual prowess, the wisdom of God, you know, that is conceptualized and contextualized within industries. Do you understand this? So it doesn't matter if you got a great idea from God and you created it, it into a business, it's not going to be enough. If you don't have a, the right structure for your business, for your organization, you are going to be permanently enslaved by what should have brought liberty. One of the big reasons God gives us a vision is so that we can master our time so well that we can legislate more room to spend with him. Legislate is not, you can legislate your time so well that you can spend it with the father. Do you understand this? And I feel like that's one of the secrets. It's one of the secret gifts that entrepreneurship can offer you. Do you understand this? If God gives you an idea and you start to run with that idea, and you, you start to serve him through that purpose he's offered you, one of the perks that should come with that is because you are now in control of your time, you are able to devote more of it to the Father and create more blank spaces in your life for God to move through you. Do you understand this? 
But that's not what happens if you don't have a structure. If you don't have a structure, you're gonna build a business that enslaves you more than when you were in maybe a corporate job or something. So people, you know, people, so how do I say that? A woman who is a stay-at-home mom can be overwhelmed, more overwhelmed than someone who is running two or three businesses. And, and business is no an entrepreneur because in being a stay-at-home mom, you are actually a different kind of entrepreneur. You are in the business of souls. You are in the business of destinies. Do you understand? You are still in this transaction where you are selling a solution intentional parenting, compassionate parenting, where you are raising and building with God legacy. But the point is, there are so many stay-at-home moms, for example, who don't create systems, structures, the power of an excellent schedule in their lives. And they're just overwhelmed that they are cranky and, and it doesn't matter again that you are even a stay-at-home mom because you are there, but you're not there. So structure has been the game changer in my own life. It's been the game changer. Across my different businesses and um, my nonprofit organization and ministry, we have a team of over 1,000 staff members, interns, volunteers, and partners. I'm telling you. <laughs> and there is a robust architecture where everyone fits in somewhere and they are serving and they are reporting to someone who's reporting to someone who's reporting to someone who's reporting to someone who's reporting to, someone who's reporting to me. <laughs> and we have all these meetings where there's a breakdown of the work that is going on. And I'm eternally grateful for the gift of men, right? And can I tell you a secret that the Lord shared with me in 2017? He said that for every divine vision, for every season of life and everything I've told you to do, whether it's just being, right? Just being a believer who loves the Lord. In each of those seasons, there are people the Lord has ordained to walk your path with you. But for visionaries who are leading an assignment in particular, and for entrepreneurs, it is structure that opens the door to the harvest. You, you remember the scripture that talked about the gates of your life being open and the merchandise of the nations coming in with their people. God wants to do that for you, but it is structure. And this applies to churches too. You could be praying and preaching a great word and trusting God to bring people into the, into the work. But if you don't have a structure, it's just going to be like a basket that is leaking good stuff. People are going to be coming in through the front door and they'll be leaving through the back door and you're not even going to know. I could go on and on and on and on with the matter of structure, but it's just something you want to start to explore. When we get to the question and answer point, if you ask more questions, I could lead you to a few resources that definitely help. Number four is of course support system, which I've spoken to a little bit. Um, so I'm not going to sort of become pedestrian with it, but I'm going to tell you three things that I believe are super helpful um, with support systems. The first is when we talk about an effective support system, I'm not even saying getting a caregiver. I'm not even talking about getting a nanny per se. Getting a nanny is great, you see, but a nanny is not necessarily uh, an effective support system until you have cloned your nanny. That's where the hard work is. To clone your nanny is to train them and to pour yourself so much into them that they can simulate the exact same experience that your children would have had when you are at home as if you were not at home. I mean, the exact experience your children will have if you're not at home in that moment as it would be if, the, if you were at home. And I'm not trying to say your nanny can replace you. That's not the goal. But when it comes to, for example, the schedule that you have for your children's day, the kind of conversations they can have or can't have, the kind of TV they can watch, the time of their tab, and how you've even automated that with technology, which is still all about, <laughs> which is still all about structure. Let me take you back a bit to structure. You know, in the past, I used to be like, just so concerned learned about some things I would love my husband to do that he wasn't doing. And I'd be like, why would you even remember like, ah, there's something that's um, early to middle last year that he wanted to become his executive assistant. 
why not share do for you doing it why not schedule it on google calendar and let him get the invitations let him get the alert saying that you know friday is date night and wednesday is uh you know our time of video and saturday is family bible study or whatever it is you and your own family want to do do you see and plug that in so that's an example of structure so i'm not even just speaking to your business but even to your life okay for support system, three things matter if you're going to build an effective support system. Number one is to train those who serve, who work with you um, in the value system that you consider important. So that when you are not there, um, your children, your whatever matters to you is not experiencing something different. I'm saying that you even, I train my own mom. When I take my children for holidays, I'll be like, mom, um, they don't, they don't, they speak Yoruba, you know, don't try to speak English to them. That's what we're working on now. Uh, mom, they don't eat after this time. You know, this is, they study between this time and this time. They can't have their, they can't watch TV at this time. So you don't put it on, you know, those sort of things. Do you see like mom, they don't beg for your food though. So if they say, oh, grandma, I want out of your food. We don't allow it because there's something I'm sort of trying to achieve. That is how the, your mom, for example, becomes an effective support system. So you, you, you train with the same value system and the same belief system that you have and you want to model. That's important. The second is you actually have to learn to ask for help, right? And that's me preaching to myself because for the longest time, I would just want to do it on my own. But I started to learn how important it is. If I'm not pushed to the wall, I'm not going to ask. But now, even if I'm, I, I don't need to be pushed to the world to just feel like, guys, please come and go to grandma's place. Just everybody first go first. I just want to be alone. Um, so asking for help is definitely very important. And then uh, the principle of reciprocity is also important. When I see people who mistreat their nannies, I, just, I think it's a great degree of foolishness. Personally, no, no, I don't have any intention to be rude. I'm sorry. But no matter how upsetting and knowing that person is, as long as they are still in your house, mistreating them, talking down at them, you know, hitting them, withholding their salary, um, acting as if they are second class citizen, it's so counterproductive. I'm like, which, which woman does that? But you can so see to your pastor, you can give gifts to your boss. What are you doing? What are you even doing? That's a person that is in your house with the treasures that mean the world to you. I don't understand it. I never get it. I never get it. For me, my caregivers who are in my house, can I be honest? They are more important to me than the staff who are in my office because my staff are offering transferable skills. My caregiver, I pour so much into her that to repeat that transfer process is a lot of work. So what she's offering me is premium value especially when they have the right heart. And when they don't have the right heart, it's even more important for you to model love. Because if you, that you, if you continue to model, I don't understand it too. Like she doesn't have a great heart. She keeps malice. She's very rude. And then you are, you are being harder on her. She's going to be giving you more of that stuff. And I feel that's a word for someone. So when we talk about support systems, you have to use the law of kind reciprocity. And that basically is invest, put your money where your mouth is, put your gift where your mouth is. If a relationship is of value to you, then invest in that relationship. If a relationship is important as a support system to you, invest in it, invest in your mentors, right? So that when you need to withdraw, withdraw, you are able to do that. Invest in your, in your relationship with your husband, invest in your relationship with your, yeah, your friends. Just be that person who can withdraw because you've made those deposits. And the final thing is stillness, right? And I love to say steal your steal. S-T-E-A-L, your S-T-I-L-L. S-T-E-A-L, your I-S-T-I-L-L. -L. So steal your steal. Um, there will be many demands in our lives. There will be different seasons. There will be schedules that we continue to create, you know, but I promise you there will be days it's just plain overwhelming. You've tried all, you know, and I mean, I commend women who, for example, because of 
COVID, don't even have a caregiver. You live in other countries, you don't have a caregiver with you. So as I've been hearing me talking about caregiver, you're like, that reality is not even mine. I commend you. You know, I just like, I do it all myself. And those are part of the reasons why I am a Niger girl. I'm a village chicken. Just leave me like this. What? Who is going to be do what? <laughs> anyway, you've got to also um, organize your life in a way that allows you just be still, right? To rest, to recover, to renew. Before COVID, I had a practice that has been on for a long time where once a month, and if I miss a month, ah, hmm, I will start talking about it to my husband, like, please, so I have to go. You know, I'm at my best when I'm nurtured and when I'm nourished. So for, for a long time, I would take myself out to a hotel one weekend in a month, honestly. Those are reasons I work hard so I can take care of myself. I love the baby girl life and I don't feel like there's any reason why I shouldn't have it. Because I'm a hard worker, you know, and Jesus, Jesus wants me happy. <laughs> so I will take myself away. I will take good care of myself. I love spars. Um, yeah, so I do that too. And I just feel like many times we don't invest in ourselves enough in terms of our own nourishing. We do it for others, but we don't do it enough for ourselves. Okay, I'm going to have to stop here. I think that my host has been gracious for not even private chatting me like, hello, come and be going. But spirit season, structure, support, and stillness. Um, God bless you in Jesus' name. Thank you for listening. And yeah, I can't wait for the rest of the night. And thank you so much, Pimo. I love you. Thank you, DDK. <clears throat> How can we say you should come and be going? When you are the you are one of the reasons why we are gathered here today. So where are you going actually? You cannot come and be going. <laughs> when you are giving us baby girl life tips. <laughs> it's not only you that should be doing baby girl life. Uh, all of us, we want to do baby girl life, you know. But thank you so much. Spirit, season, structure, support, still amazing. I remember the other day I called you and I was like, TDK, do you rest? I hope you get, and I was asking out of concern. I hope you get a lot of a, enough rest. I he said, ah, Pimo, I rest more than you rest, Steph. <laughs> you know, and you're like, and I know that about you too, you know, uh, disciplined about structure, about uh, getting help and receiving help. For some people, it is so difficult to receive help. Some of us are just wired to just do everything, carry it on our head, be everything, do this one, do that one. You know, we are the real McCoy. We want to be there. We want to uh, police the children. We want to be there in the kitchen. We, you know, they, they, we've been able to, we've put ourselves in that box where people feel like that is how you are a wife, you know, a proper wife. And for those that are, pastor's wives too we just feel like you know when i'm sweating it out in the kitchen that's when my you know my uh, uh people will begin to say that ah she's an amazing woman and all that i remember pastor mildred i think during the uh, leading women conference we had about two years ago she was sharing an experience with us how some young ladies came to our house to pack boxes or something for church and she was upstairs and, you know, she overheard them conversing and they were saying stuff like, wow, this pastor's wife said, now, wow, she can't even offer us, offer us something. She can't even do this. So she overheard them. And in her mind, she's like, is that what you came to my house to do? And if you know Pastor Midred so well, she said right there and then she just came and I said, okay, yeah, come and be going. Thank you so much. And that was the last time those girls came to our house. Because honestly, there's just unrealistic expectation. Number one, you don't even know what she's doing upstairs. You don't even know what she's battling with. You don't even know what it is she's busy with. And here you are, you just think because you're in your pastor's house, then she should become your maid and become your cook all of a sudden. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. But thank you so much, DDK, for letting us into your life and showing us how you do it. That uh, after all, you don't have uh uh superpowers as it well but you have spiritual powers so you've shown us your uh the way in which you've been doing what you've been doing and i love particularly you know your emphasis on the ministry of the holy spirit we cannot overemphasize you know that in our lives as women as women leaders as visionary people as people of influence we cannot overemphasize the place 
of the ministry of the Holy Spirit. So yeah, I'm going to go right into the question. So please, I'd like to come back on live. Uh, let me see your beautiful face. I'd like to, I, I'm, I'm sure we're all blessed by that. Someone says short, but uh, brief, but powerful. Yeah, honestly, brief. And I'm sure our notes are, are almost full safe. And I love how you said you can be a wife and not be a lover. I can see that something was pulling you in that direction. And I was saying it, that come on, you know, I'm sure you didn't hear me. <laughs> like, let it pull you. It's okay. It's okay. It's part of why we're here. And I'm sure that this time we're spending together here uh, is not, uh, is not, is not just uh, uh, for show or just one of those meetings. Honestly, it is for us to glean, to learn, to, um, you know, take on uh, uh, words of wisdom, instructions, and act on them. So it's not enough to hear these things, but we also pray, and that is my prayer for you all, that we have <laughs> grace to do the things that we've heard, the ones that have caught our eyes and caught our attention, the ones that are like instruction. You heard it, bam, as DDK said it, you were like, that is for me. Take it and run with it. There's grace available in this conference, you know, to do that which you've received, you know, in Jesus' name. So yeah, we have a few questions already. And I think if we don't cover your question, it's okay to send it to Amaka Sin uh, as, or Amaka Sin is as well. Now, what is your name? Okay, as a magazine, please, you can send your question to her. But we're going to take some because when we sent out the forms to fill for registration, we had some questions. We asked you to send in questions. So we're going to take those questions and then DDK would answer them. And uh, we see how this takes us in Jesus' name. Amen. So yeah, the first question here. DDK, are you here now? Can I see your face, please? I'm in here, Ma. The host just has to allow me to stop my video, but I'm here, okay. Mama. I can hear you. Host, why is it she starting her video? Okay. So the first question is, <laughs> and I kind of like this, it says, um, how will you counsel a woman with a deaf Definite call of God upon her life to manage ministry. How do you? How would you counsel her? She has a definite call upon her life. How will she manage ministry, the home front, her career, especially one with financial struggles, with economic constraints? Wow, so that's how like would you? A really, a really powerful question. I love yeah. it. Yeah. Okay. So she's got a call of God on her life, but I mean, we're not clear if she's expressing it through, um, you know, through uh, an organized ministry work, because you can have a call of God on your life and what he's leading you to do is serve in a local assembly and that's fine, you know, yeah. So, but I know many times when we use that, uh, that line, we often mean maybe God is asking you to go start something, right? Maybe sometimes. So um, she's got a job, meaning that she has a, a source of income, right? Right. Um, so I can even speak, I could, I, I could start off from that point. No, no, let me not start off necessarily from that point. Let me, let me speak as lead. The first thing, right, with the image you've painted is right. to invest in practice. And I'm not saying it at a religious level at all. I'm saying mm. it for real. Like that's your life now. The moment you invest in honest, prayer. and I just pray that you, the moment you start to sense, you know, the Lord leading you to do more, leading you to be more. And you're looking at your life. You're like, how will these things be? Please invest in prayer. Anybody who truly, truly cares about their future must pray for real. You know, you must mm. invest in prayer. It will make things easy. I've seen it again and again, how a lifestyle of prayer oils you. It oils you, I'm telling you. If you start to pray, one of the things I know you will step into an experience is also what is called cashless abundance. You, you mm. may find that 
your finances don't necessarily increase and it's not like you started a business and you're getting other sources of income, but you will never have an unmet need. Those are the kind of wow. things that the anointing does. I'm telling wow. you, I, my husband and I will look back at the reasons. I will just be like, how did we even, we were even flexing on God's money. I'm telling you, even flexing, even freshing up, even giving to others. In the midst of both of us quitting our jobs, people, I think we're crazy, honestly. Yeah, if I look back, I'll be like, huh? what were we smoking? We were high on the Holy Ghost. We got quit our jobs, went into our parents were like, what is the challenge with these children? But it was prior. I remember every night we'll be declaring Isaiah 60 like this. It would feel like we're floating. So charged wow. with the Holy Ghost. And he kept moving things, moving things. We're entering into opportunities, cashless abundance. People were paying for things. What can I even start to say? Is even before we got married, we got a word that we should get married. My husband was earning maybe 40K. I was earning 70K. We didn't have anything saved up. Eh, sorry, I had 250K saved up. And then the Lord told me one service. As Pastor Dr. Ivan was preaching, all my 250K, I was like, don't worry, we'll start up with this. We'll make it in life. <laughs> And then Pastor yes. was speaking that Sunday, and the Lord said, can you borrow? I can never forget. And I know anyone can say, does God borrow, ask you to borrow money? That's what he said. He said, can you borrow wow. me 2000 yeah. I was just, it can never be the Lord talking to me. Because even God, he knows, okay, there is a need for this money. I gave that <laughs> to kids. And as I got downstairs, my husband came to pick me in this BMW that I had pushed twice. You know, because the car has a minor return to just talk in the middle of road. And I said, <laughs> I've given the 250K. And he started rejoicing. That's when I knew, ah, this is a kingdom man. I'm, I'm going to be marrying the right person. It was like glory to God. If God is laying a demand on our all, then he has something planned. Timo, we got wow. a house that had paid rent and we moved in. The woman who wow. moved out and said, God told us to allow us to move in. She left bed frame, TV frame, cutting, uh, wow. dispenser. She wow. paid electricity water bill i was just wow. like sorry yeah so invest in prayer that's the first thing the second thing is th there's a distance between when god begins to alert you about an assignment and when it is time to step into it yeah. i beg by the spirit yeah. of god do not move ahead of the father i almost feel like going later than the father is sort of if you ever are in are, are out of consonance with him it's better to be late than to be in a hurry it, or else it will mm. look like it. Yeah. It, it will look like God not send you. So you want to really just follow step after step. Don't be in a hurry because the distance between when you start to hear and you're getting this note that there's a call on my life and when he begins to say, step out, do this for me. What he does in that process is, is the work of consecration. Is when he takes you That's through right. the refiner's fire. Is when he kills you to prove a point the desire to amass, the desire to also be known is when he asks you to serve in obscurity so that when the, mm. the, the moment of, of the weight of glory come, you can carry it because the weight of glory is heavy and it takes concentration yeah. and character. Yeah. So he does that when you stay. Number three, please sell it to your husband until he buys it. Mm. If there's a calling of God on your and you were not already already in ministry before you got married there's something called the evolution gap every man no matter how anointed will have a little challenge with it in the beginning like hmm, mm. so is this calling calling in the beginning he may even sound like i'm here for you anything you need the moment you start to be go pushed out and there's some degree of you know you're going out there for real and doing this thing those, those emotions start to rise like, okay. And it doesn't mean he's not with you, he's insecure, all, all, all of those. It's just that evolution is uncomfortable. Yeah. When we start to evolve into a new level of being, it's uncomfortable for our partners, is what it is. So, ah, give me a bad wisdom. Because even if you start a ministry, when there are new levels emerging, you have to be representing the change due and say, these are things God is showing me again. This is where I'm going. Wow. So you say it. The final thing I would say is, Please do not live above your means. Because for you to have introduced mm. that financial part, eh, it's because maybe eh, it's what you're earning. Stay there. It's what you're earning. Yeah. Make yeah. plan in that allocation for now. Mm. Because it's mm. even in the way that you honor God through your, the way you manage your finances that qualifies right. you for more. So yeah, don't buy human hair. You know, yeah. 
just be in that <laughs> zone and be content yeah awesome 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 thank you so much that was awesome brilliant i love that i, I love that last point stay within your uh your your means you know don't go above you know there's this there's this there's especially if you're if you're if you're a pastor's wife there's this mode that we've been put into you must carry the gucci bag you must carry the this and carry the that you must look somehow you must always look presentable i hope you have a, I hope you have a I session have, where you're going to talk about these things that, <laughs> that's, that's, what, that's, that's what we are saying now we're having this conversation then, together now is honestly a very serious matter. because if so, someone will look like it. i'm telling you someone will look at a mrs b you know, and be admiring her her, her, her her Gucci bag, her Gucci shoe, admiring, you know, where she lives and all of that. But they would not know that she didn't start that way. She has a story to her process. Thank you, you Ma. I'm oh, telling good. you, honestly. And so, and then whoever said that a pastor's wife has to be in that mode, honestly, who said that is how we should always look? That the human hair has to be on us, as in we just have. Oh, good. God knows that I've been I've been delivered God. from that long ago. God knows. <laughs> so honestly, live within your means. Don't go borrowing. Don't go mache juarai law. I don't know how to say that in English. Don't do beyond yourself. You know, just live within your means. Amazing and profound. Thank you, Debola, for that. Uh, so the next question is. How do you operate above church ministry drama? How do you operate above church ministry drama? How do you operate above it? So what's church ministry drama? <laughs> so you serve in the local assembly, right? So, yeah. That's ministry, there's, there's ministry drama, Debola. I'm sorry, honestly, I don't know what ministry that might <laughs> the question. How do you operate above church ministry drama? Where probably, like what we've said, uh, uh, so how do I explain this now? What does, what's this person trying to say? Like, uh, there's a lot of ministry drama, Dibola. How do I explain it now? You say even you are struggling because you don't really... We don't really I mean, know we, it. We don't know it, right? We within our tribe. Yeah. <laughs> we don't have it within our tribe. <laughs> no. Well, maybe they can share a bit more. Although I can say one thing you know, for free. Okay. Maybe I can say something, Shaq. While okay. maybe our sisters then share it with us in the comment section. What they mean by ministry let drama, me right? Yeah, maybe they can share more. But let me tell, let okay. me share from my heart three things. Three okay. things, you know, that I know quickly okay, is important. <laughs> Number one is that I find this to be so true. The state of your heart mm. impacts on what you attract. Pimo, I That's see fine. it to be so real. The That's state right. of your heart impacts on what you attract. That's right. So that is why there are things that aunts will gravitate toward and their, their, their fragrances or odors that flies mm. will gravitate towards. The state mm. of your soul is almost like a fragrance. What is inside? Mm. I hope it's a fragrance and not an odor. I, I find yeah. this to be true. What is going on inside your heart? Even without you saying it, it's like a vibe. Mm. And it's like a mm. first field. Pimo, this thing is real. I'm telling you that so... So maybe I should give this kind of example. You know, both of us are like really different, even though we're so alike, but we're still quite different. Like you are maybe more outgoing, warmer, you know, sweeter. You are just like mommy yard. Like Jesus made you just like that, like mommy Jesus. Did you just say just mommy so yard well. now? <laughs> yeah, I just said it. You know, just like, you know, we used to call your mother in Israel. So yeah, you just have that kind of thing, right? And I don't. I am more, okay. yeah, I am loving, but I'm not necessarily like super, super outgoing or friendly or something like that anyway. But here's what I found. While I was so worried about it, when you were now moving, 
uh, to the headquarters and we were becoming the pastors in Lekki. I was just like, this shoe is too massive. Honestly, Lord, I don't want. This shoe is too big. <laughs> I'm not going to be interested to host anybody to my house on Sunday afternoon. Sunday afternoon is the only day that I can sleep in the afternoon after the Lord <laughs> I don't have 32 people in my house. I have no such interest. Like at all. You know, so those of us kind of conversations, but do you know what's PDK that healed me? So I was sharing with him mm. like, church people are just going to have this big expectation like, ah, ah DDK is going to be our mommy. And I'm more like a daddy than a mommy. I want to say you <laughs> I want to just make it straight in life. Boom, stop it, kind of thing. <laughs> and he said, he said the most profound thing to me. He said, Debola, you are every inch agape. He said, that will mm. shine evil man. Mm. He said, mm. I know you in a way nobody else knows you. And mm. there's no guile in your heart. You are every mm. inch agape. He said, don't worry, mm. to flow through. My God, mm. I think that's the most powerful thing he said to me when we're starting out, and it shaped everything. Why I was more people. What ultimately happened is tribe, our 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 amazing family members in church, sort of just adjusted and said, "This did it. Let's just let's just love her like that because there's <laughs> there's just love in her heart, even though she's so different. Yeah. She may not host you on Sunday afternoon, but who might <laughs> like that? I would rather take you all of us to lunch." <laughs> I want to be eating rice at home. What? Who want to cook for 38 people? You know, so I think that's the first thing. And it's I didn't cook for 38 you. people, I Debola. I did not cook for 38 people. <laughs> like you'll be insulated. What are you saying, Ma? <laughs> oh my God. Okay. I, I didn't cook for 38 yes. people. Yes. So that's the first thing. I feel like People who I know, you know, maybe like 29 or 27, but people, man, you know what I'm talking about. You know, those schoolers we, that they'll be dragging out into this sitting room to. Oh my God, what's happening to that talk? <laughs> Oh my God, what's happening to network? What's happening to network? Oh, wow. Okay, she's back. Unmute her, please. She's back. Oh, yow, 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 yow. Unmute her, please. <laughs> right, she's back. Yeah. <laughs> right. So that's right. the first thing. Um, Pimo, I do find that there are, and, and okay, so let me just go on to the second thing. So that's the first, the state of your heart. Your heart is actually like your greatest asset, is, is your best accessory, and you want to invest in it. You mm. want to invest in, you want the Lord to contribute what your heart with love. Some people have mm. drama inside. They are critical, they are judgmental, mm. and she didn't greet mm. me well, you know, all those mm. things. So mm. you, you'll be, you'll be, it will become either her. Oh, like drama, mm. even us, we're here for you. Yeah. <laughs> you know, but when you don't have, you don't even see. Right. Right. People who would say to me later that, ah, did it in the past? I actually thought that maybe you were angry at me because there was one day I greeted you. I don't, I don't think you answered me. Yet I know, so you didn't even notice. I would just be doing side eye. That's one day. I didn't see you. I saw you are one. What was fighting for what in life? Everything is good. I love you. If I if mm. I have something to say, I will say it. I said the only right. I should not say it. And if said I should right. not say it, that's the end. So that's the first thing. Mm. The second thing I find, Pimo, this one is big. Pimo, this is this one is very serious. Mm. A lot of wives or, or or female leaders in ministries have right. huge baggage insecurity. Insecurity yeah. that they yeah. do not know until yeah. situations start to bring it out. There's a lot yeah. of pastors yeah. who are very yeah. insecure. And they didn't True. know because, you know, we all have what is called our small bubbles. You wear right. your love, right. you celebrate it, right. you feel your cool. But when you are now dropped into a larger ocean, all mm. those hidden insecurities start to come out. And let me tell you for free, we all have them. 
but you've got to take mm. quick responsibility to that's knock yourself right. out of it. There are too many women that's right. who have insecurity. They can't do right. with someone who is a size smaller, who dresses better, who speaks mm. better, you mm. know, and who their husband is commenting. They have a problem mm. with it. You know, between mm. me and my husband, I'm even the one that will commend you more. So I can't hear him commending you and I'll be like, ah, what, what's happening? You know? <laughs> Oh, if you comment this one, you need to already that. Even me, I'll be screaming, that's right. That's <laughs> ginger hat. What? Because I know that when rubber meets the road, there's something right. that I deliver that, you know, mm. is okay. Preach it. You Preach it. Yeah, that was not. Mm. I feel like if women really pay attention, especially in this whole husband wife dynamics, if they pay right. attention to what makes you tick. And you really invest in that annoying right. that right. thing that you know you come with and nobody else can bring. What a blessing right. that would be. They are insecure right. women. And when you are insecure, it's, it's like having joined this and seen everything as yellow. When you are mm. insecure, you will also be creating drama. You are the one that will see right. somebody that said something that you don't like, or she that, sat in front, yeah. or yeah. She, she was greeting everybody and she was like, Hi, she didn't specially mm. greet you. But the one that I'll see mm. when you were coming up stage, they were clapping. Somebody didn't clap well. Didn't clap. Mm. Mm. There are those things. So that's, of course, the mm. second thing I find. The third thing I find that also creates ministry drama is unclear expectations. And mm. I mean from the perspective of, um, you know, maybe uh, uh, founding pastor to other pastors or pastors in the local assembly to their leaders or HOD to, you know, I feel like leaders, this one, I know it to be real because it's a test the Lord continues to take me through and helps me to pass with leading ministry. I mean, we were 10 years a few uh, days ago. Days ago, so with right. personal ministry, I do know that the, about the only way that you can get to me until Jesus really helped me with it, the only way you can possibly get to me is when you are leading an assignment that God, that you are part of something God has told me to do and you are not excellent at it. I would just be like, oh God, what was your purpose in life? You cannot do this work with. You are HOD of <laughs> Oshin, you know, but your Oshin is not. So I do know that sometimes when leaders feel disappointed by the commitment, the service of their members, you know, um, those things can really now create tension that makes you just feel something is off, you know, but you mm. don't know why your pastor is acting that way. And that begins to make you like, is it this, is it that? People now start to talk to people, you know, um, yeah. So I feel like unmet expectations are also just really, so you want to be more, yeah. you want to be clearer about yeah. what you want in those relationships. And I feel the rest of it is just too many unconsecrated canal believers. The rest of it is a lot of canality. The gossiping, the lying on one another, all is a lot of carnality. So if, if you find that there's a lot of ministry drama, you can make the investment to start to pray for your local assembly, you know, and to just send Satan out because Satan is on the back pew, you know, and that's what's happening. It's just praying uh, around your ministry. So there's, there's carnality that also fuels, you know, nonsense. There are things that the Holy Spirit will dust out of your life and out of your assignment when it comes in and it takes over. Sorry, I was mute on. Thank you so much for that. That, that was profound. Honestly, that second point is big deal. And I know yes. we can't even cover it here this night, but I know there's a huge uh, measure of insecurity. And I also think there's also a false mindset that people already have about being a pastor's wife, about being, a, especially being a pastor's wife. There's yes. this cultural, traditional mindset that people have carried over. So, so here you are, you married your husband, he wasn't a pastor, and then he becomes a pastor, an associate pastor in his local assembly. Now there's a mindset you already have about who a pastor's wife should be. And then automatically you carry that baggage and then you begin to have, like you said, unrealistic expectations. 
about how you should be treated. Now, all of a sudden, all the young, young ladies must come to your house to cook for you, to check whether your, your clothes are done, do you done the yeah. laundry, you know, and all of that, because we just assume that is what defines who a pastor's wife is. Yeah. All of a sudden, your husband becomes a pastor. And I don't know if you can touch on this a bit. There are a number of pastor's wife that I've met, I've counseled uh, personally <clears throat> via inbox that have a measure of insecurity, not only in themselves, but they are now as, as, a, as a pastor's wife, your husband is everywhere as a pastor. He's, he's ministering, he's counseling, he's sitting down, he's talking. Now you find a lot of pastor's wives. They want to know everything the pastor is, who is talking to the pastor. What did she come to tell you? That lady, that lady in yellow that came to you after service. What was she saying? What's her issue? What's her problem? And what counsel did you give her? You know, and there's just that measure of insecurity. And then you have some of them say, no, don't talk to that sister. You talk to her a lot after service. How do you address this, you know, as a pastor's wife? How do, can you just touch on that a bit? Hmm, okay. Um, so I'm just going to also rely on the Holy Spirit for what his thoughts might be because <laughs> it's so strange to me. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> Just come on fast and come on eat and come on, come on, be with me. Let's come on, do our life. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> you know what my own boss said to me was, you need to actually be more present. What's, what's up with you? You need to. <laughs> so I'll be like, if you ever need me, I'll stay back a bit more. If you just be like, yeah, this conversation, I need my wife. Just text me and I will be there for you. Yeah. <laughs> okay, enjoy your life because you actually are in a consulting business. You go out Monday right. to Friday. You're constantly in organizations. And, <laughs> you know, um, so here is what I would say. If I think about it, the first is if you're not making sufficient prayer investment, you would have fears about what you can take care of, that the Lord can take care mm. of. Yeah. Mm. So yeah, for real. Mm. So our fear is often a reflection of our prayerlessness because it's our prayerlessness mm. that fuels our inability to trust. I'm telling you. Wow. For real. Wow. Real. So wow. it's prayerlessness that fuels that inability to trust. And we all are guilty of it. Your own might not be, uh, you know, checking your husband, asking questions, but we all have areas and it's real. Why are you looking at your husband and you're feeling like, ah, ah, what, or something or whatever it is. And whenever mm. you find an area where you have been in the flesh and you are trying to be, you know, you are, you're, 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 you're fueling your fear, your insecurity, that is a good area where you are still unsubmitted. Consequential teeth cover being that, that, you know, the paint was not enough to spread and paint everywhere. So you do need to take that back and be like, okay, this is an unsubmitted area and you can begin to pray for sure. Every time I've ever felt insecure about something and I took it to the Lord enough, he took care of it. He definitely mm. took care of it. Mm. You know, so um, Woman's insecurity, which is not a problem. So let's let's be let's balance it. The areas where you are insecure, so don't yeah, yeah. leave this session feeling like you you are a damaged person or you have a problem. No, but this is the way you can do it. If you're feeling insecure, you can flip it and and start to say, "What will my husband do that will strengthen my need in this area? That will meet my emotional need in this area." Insecurity is often created by an unmet emotional need or an assurance mm. established, right? So, and we mm. need it in various degrees. If you have previous subconscious conditioning or programming where you were rejected, you were spoken down at, or you know, you witnessed your mom being rejected by your dad, all of those things I can't go into. They are soul imprints that make you afraid of being disrespected, of being left alone, of being um, of, of someone else being chosen over you. You know, or maybe you've always felt like you weren't so smart or so beautiful. Those are realities mm. and it's fine. Mm. But yeah. what you can start yeah. to do is you flip it and, and start to say, um, how can my husband respond to me and treat me that this emotional need becomes met in my life? 
And people, that's another mm. problem. Many of us don't know how to have emotional negotiations where you say, you are the only one that can do with this thing. I sometimes feel like you're giving other people more attention than yeah. you're giving you. Yeah. And I know yeah. it's silly. I know I'm the one you love the most, but I don't mind more PDA. I don't mind more public display of affection. 90% mm. of women cannot say that. They can't wow. say that. It's just the same way women cannot ask for what they want in bed. They can't say, right. when you do this, it makes me feel great. They can't say right. that. So it just wow. feels all sort of associated emotions. Where you're just yeah. feeling like always on the receiving end, you know, like you don't feel like you have a voice and, and it's mm. not a good thing. So that is, yeah. Um, yeah. The, the ability, it's called um, the competence of vulnerability. It's a competence. Becoming vulnerable to negotiate emotionally is actually a competence. We all need to grow it. Some of us have it in greater degree. I've grown it over the years that, you know, sometimes I ask for some things and my husband is like, ah, ah, ah. I'll be like, what was, ah, ah. you are the only one I can tell. If I don't tell you, you know, am I not wasting my time? I don't want to waste my time in my life. <laughs> that what I, I must enjoy this, just this one life. Just this just one life. One. Ah, and I don't intend to go anywhere. This is where we are together. This marriage must this is your bus stop. It must I must love it. I must be <laughs> worth a month, you know? And I've asked of him things that were not even in his comfort zone. And I'll be like, I can meet you halfway. How can I help you? <laughs> Move it. As it takes me. He must ask me, you must write poem for me. You don't get. Stop all this <laughs> spiritual name. I, will, I can type the poem, send it. Then you will use my own to know how to write the next one. Yes. <laughs> So you, instead of saying, why are you Man talking of God, to God, help yourself. Yeah. You know, so instead of saying, why are you talking to her? Who are you talking to? Begin right. to say, why do you have this need to know? Mm. Oh, because I do feel left out. So you can flip right. that and start saying, right. you know, can, right. we, can we work on our friendship? Can we, right. can we just more about how our lives right. are going? I feel like I'm missing you. I feel like I want to be more involved. You can flip it that right. way. And right, that one right. is the most positive one. So yeah, that right. is important. And Pimo, finally, right. a, another issue there is when you see those things, maybe there are underlying issues in your marriage that yeah. situations are fueling. That's right. Yes. That's so, right. Yes. That's so right. You also now want to really thank you, Kate. Deal with that. Reframing. I love that. Reframing. I love it. Yes, ma'am. That's so, right. You want to also now invest in your marriage and make it a better, stronger one. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. Um, so uh, there's a question here, and I think you kind of answered it uh, when you were talking initially at the beginning. What advice can you give to a growing leading woman on how to create structure so as to avoid burn, burnt out? You know, but I don't know. Do you have anything else to add to that? I think you actually you know, said a few things about that when you were talking about structure and support, but is there, is there anything else? Because someone else asked, even just now, that they would like you to shed more light on structure, you know, and also the resources you mentioned for structure. So I think this kind of like sums up being able to balance your life, you know, being able to juggle, being a mother, being a wife, being a minister, you know, being uh, 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 a child of God, a daughter of God. So yeah. They want to know more about structure. What do you want to say okay, more about good. that? Okay, thank you so much, mom. Um, it sounds very good. So a few more things to say about structure is number one, every structure is built from the point of view of vision, right? It's just like how we say faith really begins where the will of God is known. A life of structure really begins where the will of God for you in that season is known. So it is from vision that we start to break down what our lives should look like, right? So yes. I know what the Lord wants me to do. I know what he's putting emphasis on. I know how he has called me. And for sure, um, it shapes what else, how else I live my life. So vision defines you. It refines you. And it also confines you. You can't be everywhere and you can't do everything, right? So right. it's first important 
to take your recognition of who you are to the next level. So your recognition of who you are, who God is in you, and what he's calling you to be and to do. And don't forget that things will change in different seasons, right? But it's important to know for now, what are the top three priorities of my life? What should I really, right. really be paying attention to focus on what is staring in my heart, right? From the moment you're clear about that, we can then talk about uh, maybe three to five more things that could be of help to you. Um, the first is that structure is really about scheduling, scheduling, right? Yeah, yeah, so you have yeah. to sit and ask yourself, how am I spending my time? Because your time right. is the standard unit of your life. Your time is a yeah. standard unit of your life. So how are you spending your time is how you're spending your life. So scheduling is the first fundamental uh, level of building structure in your life. Of course, the structure in business, the structure in, you know, but your life is like a full Generally. picture of, yes, yeah, exactly. So scheduling is where you start from. I am very traditional with my scheduling, um, which means that I actually sit with an Excel spreadsheet. I've done that for so many years. And I break my, the way I work is I break my day into three hourly blocks and okay. I fill it with what it will contain. So, and the thing is season now, because in a recent season, I've been going to bed at eight. And wow. Day. But that's because I need the quietness of the night for a season. But standard, right. yeah, yeah. But standard, I will be up at 5.30 and I will start my day. So 5.30 to 8.30 is all the time for exercise, meditation, praying in tongues, studying the word, listening to a message, boom, just shouting alone and <laughs> all of that. And then 8.30, 12.30 is the next block. 12.30 to 3.30 is the next block, right? And you just impute the different activities right. like that. But it's right. going to be different for everyone. And yeah, yeah that's your, that's your double investment, right? But it's important to have a schedule. When I then have that schedule, um, my executive assistant many times will carry it and impute it into my calendar um, okay. for the activities that will be repeated. My coaching calls um, happen on a certain time of the day, on so-so dates. So I do schedules for blocks of each day. Then I also lump my different expressions into different days. So Monday is retreat, Tuesday is ideation hub, right, Wednesday, um, right, Tuesday is right. first, Wednesday's ideation hub, like that. And then those right. days, I work actively right. on what I'm right. working on um, with that thing. Yeah, so scheduling, which is big deal. I'm going to ask you to go and find Robin Page. She has a lot of answers for how I have mm. approached, um, is, is her first name. Oh gosh, her surname is Page. Um, and if you register for the conference, actually I can send Pimo a lot of resources for you. Um, awesome. That she can share with we yes. would take note of that, and then definitely we would for, would forward it to all those who registered. Definitely, okay. then we'll, we'll do that. that. Um, yes. Yeah. So we'll let me that. not forget about it. Um, in case okay. I'm not that remembering the name, I can share a lot of links with you. Um, yeah. Okay. So scheduling number one, number two thing with structure is um, what else is super important for me? I, I, you know, leveraging technology. Automate what you can automate. And right. yeah, so whatever you've done and you know you are still going to do again, do it once, right. make it standard, and it can be reused. Right. I'm the queen of right. that one, even for emails, right? Mm. right? If there's an email, a request that always comes in or dedicate on something, I would create a standard response and I'll send it to my email. Wow. Anytime anybody has that question, it is that standard email they're going to go to. Right, right. So right. I try to really leverage technology as well, even to the simple things of getting alarms on my phone. I mm. get alarms a lot for different things, reminding me of what things. I should do. So when you've done your schedule, take it to Google Calendar and integrate it also, yeah, so that it reminds yeah. you on your phone and all of that. Yeah. Yes. Um, yeah. So yeah, you use technology a lot. A final thing I would say around building the right structure is whenever you had something that works for you that your team members your caregivers, bring people around you 
let them know where you are going and pass on the knowledge you've gotten to them, right? Um, and then do frequent reviews with yourself and with your team. Even if you are one person, don't ever let a month go without you your goals, the things you've set to achieve and ask yourself how far you've come, if you faced any challenges, how do you intend to try on them? But I can move a lot more resource to PMO by the grace of God. Right. And you can take right. that conversation to the next level. Yes. Awesome. So to uh, just layer on that, on that thought, uh, talking about scheduling and talking about all of that structure, so there's a question here that says, many know you to be someone who has uh, most, if not all, of her activities planned out weekly. And this is a question. Does it ever happen to you that God cancels out those plans completely for something else he would have you do at that season? Even when you run your initial plans through him before setting them up. I don't know if you, if you capture that. <laughs> well, uh, well, uh. To the point now, that let, let me be through with the question so you can just answer it because, once and for all. Um, so the B says, okay, can you hear me now? Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you now. So th there's a B, a B and C part of the question. So let me just read through so that you can give a holistic answer. Am I still seasoned? We season. Okay. All right. Um, I, I can see you and hear you. Am I awesome. the one seizing? Okay. You were seizing, but you're back on now. Okay. So the B says, if so, do you ever go back to those plants after the shift? The C says, how do you handle the change? Does it affect you in any way? And I think I would love a practical answer, a practical example of something that actually happened to you that fits into this. Okay, so yeah, so I mean, that's, that's great. Um, I have a few leaders in Deborah Initiative for Women here. Um, yeah, so, so maybe I can speak to a very recent event. So we turned um, 10 in September. And beyond that, we're also like experiencing a, a, a ministry transition in terms of a number of things that we're evolving into that the Lord has told us to do and all of that. And in, um, in the earlier part of the year, I was certain that I really had an impression in my heart that the Lord wanted us to have like a grand 10th anniversary celebration, you know, and boom, like just, it's been God had gave me the theme you know, the people to invite, what we're going to do, you know, and he even shared promises about what he was going to do through it and how he was going to, you know, and not people to take on the next level of their life and their work. And, and it was just good. So we constituted the committee ready to just fly. And you know me with all my project plans, everything. We had committee chairman and the team members. Everybody was buzzing it was good we we're having prayer meetings about it and then uh oh I just wait at a point it seemed to me that the lord started to say you know back down on the end anniversary wow. celebrations wow. and you know yeah just have uh, uh thanksgiving internally you know and i was like ah, I, I didn't even, in the beginning i was just like Debola, you maybe you're being afraid because this is such a big ticket event, you know, but it kept becoming stronger and you can't say you don't know your father's voice. So I was like, but I had a word and a leading about it and I shared it. And then he said, what is important to you about the 10th anniversary? Why do you want to have it? I said, because I, we want to worship you and we want, we want to make <laughs> your praise famous. We want to just let the world know how good you have been to us. There are amazing testimonies we have you know and it will be such a joy he said you want to do that oh thank you yeah. okay so you have your members in a small thanksgiving you want to thank me <laughs> yeah then i'm telling you i yeah. want to be thanked <laughs> yeah wow so i had to go back and i'm like guys we're backing off on this big one right but don't worry we will meet as a family and do this and then 
you know, um, we're going to have the national conference later on, and this is what we're going to do with it and all of that. But that's just an example of what happens again and again. My team members are like tired because even when they are planning, we put posters out before that we retrieved, right? Mm. And that one is the mm. for me. It's like, I mean, again and again, no, we, we've reached out to ministers who have confirmed that in big names, I are like, oh Lord, these are fathers. And we write back that, sorry, oh daddy, our daddy, <laughs> all of our daddy is saying we're not moving anymore. Wow. Right? So wow. it's that Yoruba addict that says, Timba Nebu, that didn't mean my joke. Timo Deniko joke. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So I think that it's also easy for me because I don't know if it's always a good thing, but I feel like it's a good thing many times. PD, um, I want to say PDK. Ha, oh, my old chest. Anyway, Pimo. Ah, God, though, please let's be fast. I'm going. Ah, and you know, today is Friday. You know now. Anyway, Are you rushing us now? <laughs> I'm not rushing you. I just called my house. Give yourself, young woman. Uh, let me, let me, keep yourself let together. Me, I will try. <laughs> you know, people, <laughs> I don't send. I don't send. Jesus mm. did that one when mm. I was in and he finished it. He said, if I don't strip you of the desire mm. to please men or the desire to be liked, right? Or the desire mm. to present your Mm. You can't go far with me. You can't go far with me. I don't That's care right. that That's much. right. I don't care that much. I don't That's care. Right. That much. So if mm. I if I am certain that my father is going a different direction, I'm gonna follow him. I'm mm. going to follow him because mm. they're gonna say Hosanna today and then crucify him tomorrow. So That's right. I love people with all my heart, but I'm not fixated on what they feel about me. I'm not, mm. I, yeah, I'm mm. not exactly. I'm not, wow. I'm not, wow. so yeah. And I know that comes up. You're, you already me. answered the next right. question by that statement. Anyway, the question says you appear to be loved by many and people always seem to throw uh, accolades at you. How do you keep your head above the water and not let this accolades define you? You know, and to chip something in a bit, how do you manage heroism? You know, how do you manage it? Like you, you have a large sphere of influence. You have a large number of people. Like I said, you're a voice in this generation. You know, so you've you started towing that line a bit now, you know, sharing what you do in the sense that you don't send. Do you want to touch a bit on that? How do you not allow the accolades? Because here are people who don't even have as much influence and they seem to be defined by those. For example, remember the other day we we're talking about how people are defined by the number of likes they get on posts. You know, so there's, they, are, they are driven by that. You know, they post a picture today, they get 20 likes, they are depressed. They are literally depressed and they feel like they have, you know, they've not fulfilled God's purpose for their life. So how have you been able to manage that? And then how did you get to that point? Because I believe it was a process for you to, that where you got to that point where you don't send. So good. Whoever asked this question, like we owe you, like we're supposed to just send you on a spa date alone because it's- I asked the question. Deep, it's why we're here. I asked the question. Aha! That's what I'm like, this question is, oh, you know, like is a waiting I one. I yeah, the question, just ask answer it. it. <laughs> hey, it's, it's very deep. It's very deep. <laughs> <laughs> so that person, the kind of conversation we should have. So I have, you know, a very beloved daughter here, Karen. She's one of our leaders in ministry. And I'm just going to ask you to type it, Karen. You've, you've followed me for several years. Like we've grown together. Type, you know, what you think we do or you see me do. I want to, I want to know your thoughts. So I'm going to be speaking, Let's but I'll come back her. to whatever Let's Karen types. Her. Oh, wow, that's a blessing. Fine. Wow, thank Karen. you so much, ma'am. Is her name Karen? Wow. Okay. Yes, Karen Faladi. So she, she, can, she can talk. And if your video is on, awesome. Please, you have the floor I love it. for about wow. a minute or two. Okay, that's so good. Okay. Hey, the blood Karen. of Jesus. Oh, hey, Jesus. <laughs> hey. 
Hey, PDK, hey, PDD, hey, Jesus, it's family, Jesus. Mama, please, please, hey, George, I can mute back, please, hey, George. Why are you begging me? Just a minute, okay. a minute, please. There are people okay. waiting on you. Okay. Oh, wow. Okay, so actually, when you asked the question, I just said, I mean, this is easy. This is um, DDK's, um, her, her word to us that, you can't let these things get to you. It, it, it's not about, it's the work of the father. And so basically, I don't even see, I don't see this in DDK at all. I see humility as, as, as like her second skin. So I don't even think, I don't even see it at all. So maybe that's why I put it easy. So, um, <laughs> so yes, um, I think for us, it's about honor um, and 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 service and humility and knowing that this is the work of the father and I think it's from that basis that um, DDK is um, humble and um, please sisters help me you know that DDK just I mean appears to be that way <laughs> I'm nervous <laughs> <laughs> I love what we've done to you oh my god actually I didn't know all my family members are actually here what's going on like all my directors are here you guys are stalkers. Look at all of them. Please, oh, let me just give honor to whom is due. Oh. Director Anwoli, Director Tutu, Director Buki, everyone. Oh my God. Oh, don't lie. All my leaders. What happened? These guys are stalkers. Please let me, let me focus. I just have been behaving in a different organized fashion. Oh God. Oh God. And them down while everybody's here. Anyway, um, so, so that question is really powerful. The, maybe I would say about three things. There are so many things I could say to it, but I will keep it to three. Pimo, can you hear me? Yes, it looks like yes, I can. Yes, I can. Yes, I can. Hear you loud and clear. Let me know if you can hear me again. Oh, great. Okay, you hear me. Okay, fantastic. So the first thing I would speak to is, if I, if I was to Adenike, I can see you laughing at me. To honestly, Pimo is, and I'm trying to say it in a very positive way, um, so that it doesn't come across in a funny way. I have a measure of fear for people. You know, mm. <laughs> I don't know how to. Yeah, I, I'm gonna try to keep it positive, but it is what it is. I feel like one of the early intelligences that the Lord gives unto sons that He loves is a recognition of the hearts of men. You see, when God mm. himself said that the mm. heart of man is desperately wicked above all things, who can know it? Mm. You should fear. Mm. Eh? That's right. Carlo Tofaria Stopler Frekiando Shmakotoba. The heart of man, you know, and he has given me privileges to have interesting experiences. Interestingly, I don't even think that I have been privileged to be betrayed because it's a privilege if you've been betrayed i've not had those kind of experiences in <laughs> uh, but god has shown the hearts of people to me a lot where from a mm. distance before anything happens he will say daughter beware watch for this and watch for that watch for and as i pay attention maybe because wisdom preserves you actually wisdom preserves you that's right. from needless things and needless tragedy that's right Yes, yes, that's there are right. Something you never experience just because you're following your father. And he'll say, that's just right. beware, beware, beware. And as I pay that's attention, right. the thing will play out in front of me. I will just be mm. like, God most high. But you will mm. never see it on my face. I, you will never hear me talk about it. Right? Yeah, very hardly. Very, very hardly. <laughs> and I'll just be smiling. And I can still serve in ministry with you for another 10 years. Right? Mm. But I will know what the boundaries are. Because wow. we owe all men love. My that's love right. That's is right. It's not a reciprocation of mm. how we No. That's right. That's right. Powerful. You, access to me is what I, I don't owe all men. I don't that's owe right. access. Rich. I don't owe yeah. all men. Yeah. So I mm. will not Rich. You, but I will love you. It's louder. You. Louder, Debola. Louder. Anything evil against you. But mm. there are things you know, there are covenant boundaries you will never be able to cross. Because if you cross, right. if I allow you cross them, then I will even offend God. Because he showed that's you right. to me. Yeah. That's yeah. Right to me. So, yeah. Know, ah, 
I have a I have a secret insider gist understanding of humans taught to me mm. by my father. So I'm not a judgmental, mistrustful, suspicious person. No, discernment is, mm -mm. is different. From discerning. That's right. I don't right. go around yeah. like uh, all of them. They are evil. No, I have people mm -mm. that I deeply, deeply yeah. trust because the Lord yeah. showed their heart. Let me yeah. tell you, the Lord will take people's heart to me so much so that even when externally they seem to have drama, I will stick with yeah. them because it will keep saying, yeah. there's no guys, stay there. Yeah. You stay there, yeah. no guy. Yeah. I'm telling you. Yeah. But some people, we honor you, ma. We adore yeah. you, ma. You are the people who can slice bread. And the Lord will say, just face me. Fry me, me, I'm me. your dodo. Fry me, I'm your dodo. Step on me, I'm your red carpet. You know? nothing does nothing so and it's first from that standpoint i think it's a prophetic privilege of being hey, why is he hanging <laughs> okay, can you hear me now ma yes i can hear you i can hear you now uh -huh. so i, feel I like was saying say, fry me i'm your dodo yes and i said walk on me i'm your red carpet all those dimensions <laughs> nothing. I was like, nothing. Yeah, because i think it's the gift of being a prophet i received the life of jesus in 1990 mm and mm. I started to be on fire actively from that time mm. and I entered mm. into a whole different dimension of the prophetic from the year 2000 I had an encounter wow. with Jesus to change my life and I don't take my relationship okay he doesn't take his relationship with me joking that's <laughs> better with right he's the one that chased me down and followed me up right and held me even when I was sleeping right. away. Mm. so he's helping me and I thank him for it so from that perspective, number one is a game changer. You know, it's mm. a game changer. People, the second thing, this one, eh, I also say it with caution because it's, it's because of privileged access. The second right. thing is that, you know, I have been counseling for many years. You know, ma. Yeah. And yeah I, I started yeah. to lead a ministry in 2003 while I was on yeah. campus, right? Yeah. And had yeah. a huge following of women. Right. So I've been counseling for many years. Mm. And Pimo, let me tell you one of the most interesting things. Hmm. <laughs> People sit in front of me trying to talk about someone and trying to say, oh, they don't like this thing or that thing. And they're talking many times about a spiritual leader, a mentor, you know. Um, and even when I say, I don't need the name, I don't want to know the name, I can fix the issue. We can talk about yeah. the issue without you right. telling me what they, what happened, right? But they will right. still try to say, this is context, ma. So this person, mm. and, and they did mm -hmm. this, and if that, and if I listen enough, I will know whether practically or even just observing, I will know what they're talking about. So many right. people will sit in front of me in the office of a pastor, a counselor, or a prophet, and they will be, they will be sharing heartfelt bitterness about wow. someone that a few weeks down the line, I would see them commending in public. Wow. Yes. I see that a lot too. Please confirm. Yes. I see that. I see that a lot too, Debola. Yes. I'm telling You're you that so right. something, this is something that has happened from So right. Something that yes. happened from campus day and still happened. So you see, right. as I'm here, I will be a foolish person if I mm. think that there are not people who mm. say, cry me, I'm your dodo. Who will not go and speak <laughs> to Kimo or someone mm. and say, uh, the DDK really hurts me. And there are some mm. things, the way she behaves. Mm. I, I will be a mm. foolish person. It means that mm. in my mind, I am so high on my own supply that I think I'm not right. to be foolish. Mm. So, mm. yeah. So, no. That's number two. Number three big reason, Pimo. Who I am compared to what the Lord has shown me and what he has shown mm. my fathers about me, I've not started. In fact, my wow. prayer and my fear is that I don't disappoint my maker. Wow. Honestly. <laughs> so as wow. far as where he, and it's not even just about me, like oh, where he's taking me because I'm anything. No, it's about where the father wants to lead the church. That's right. The place That's of right. prominence that he's taking the, a generation, a generation That's of right. saints. That's that place, right. We have not started to scratch it. We can't get excited mm. yet. Without what? Mm. That what? What happened? Mm. You know? And 
to speak to that just a little bit more, honestly, my parameter of greatness is really different. And because it's different, if you praise the things about me that don't speak to what matters to me, it doesn't touch me. Mm. My, my mm. parameters of greatness, for example, mm. is when people who know me can say, ah, Didike, Jesus is working on you. You are a humble person. Ah, no, Didike, mm. you are a forgiver. Oh, you are a good mm. When those mm. things I'm striving for to demonstrate more of Jesus can be seen, that you, That's right. more can look at me and say, Debola, come on this call. It's the kind yeah. of thing that gives me joy. That is yeah. who knows me over the years, yeah. who has mothered yeah. me, who has been an example of the faith to me, can look at me and say, there's a genuineness of faith in you. Come over and come and yeah. share. So that yeah. Is, yeah. I mean, I will finish this call and I'll be like, Debola, God is at work in you. Keep it up. Yeah. Yeah. Really and uh, but I yeah. did and uh, 30,000 people joined. So, so <laughs> I'm talking the same word if 3,000 people were there or if three people yeah. were there, nothing. Yeah. Else. Yeah. So that would be it for me, mama. Wow. Awesome. Profound, 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 profound. Two more questions. And uh, we would. Uh, um kind of like release you i hope we can stay with two more questions so one of the questions i want to save it for the last so before i get there someone said i think you've touched on that how do you deal with difficult women i think you've touched on that already i believe you have um what do you consider i think you've touched on that too as well okay so there's a question here that says you celebrate, speak about people on your timeline a lot. Your messages are usually very personal and detailed. How are you able to do this for a good number of people and yet appear to be very private? Please share your strategy. Hello? Imo, can you take the question again, ma? Okay, like our season. You celebrate, speak about people on your timeline a lot. Your messages are usually very personal and detailed. How are you able to do this for a good number of people and yet appear to be very private? Please share your strategy. Ah, who are the people on this call? Like, who are these people? Like, ah, <laughs> <those> are deep. <laughs> they are very, very deep. Uh, it's uh, wow it's it's really good so if i say i want to say three things now i know there are people who are going to <laughs> and be definitely <laughs> i want to say three things so i will just say those three things and that will be it forgive me <laughs> you know trinity now you know now trinity so what can we do again we still have to follow trinity <laughs> mm. so um what's going on everybody is here Anyway, the first thing is um, privacy is not secrecy. And the recognition of the difference between the two is what really keeps you as a mystery, right? It's like, this is one mysterious thing. Like, you know her, but you don't know her. <laughs> and it's sweet. <laughs> so, <laughs> privacy is not secrecy. Privacy is all about boundaries. And that's why that's I can right. never criticize anyone and feel like maybe you share too much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you can. You, if, 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 if it falls within the boundary of what you're happy to put as public consumption, that's, that's right, right. right. That's right. So privacy mm -hmm. is all about boundaries. It's, it's about knowing what you prefer to preserve. Mm. And the recognition mm. of what you prefer to preserve is what determines um, what is out there and what can never be. Do you understand this, mm, right? So yeah, that's definitely yeah. um, the first the first paradigm that shapes how I approach, you know, what I share. The second thing that shapes that powerful, beautiful question the person has asked about, but you go personal, you share stuff, is that I actually recognize that the greatest impartations are, impart are vulnerable impartations of life, the most mm. powerful impartations. So because I've been called as an equipper, an equipper stands mm. in the place of teaching, of mentoring, of coaching, 
And you really yeah. cannot mentor and disciple others if there is no vulnerable exchange of life, right? That's right. So if you can just teach and be scriptural and theoretical, if you are going to make the greatest impact, and, and think about it, the things that have been written as the strongest imprints on your soul were either by observing someone model something till you believed it mm. was possible or them sharing right. their story, you know? And right. I mean, those are my own biggest takeaways from your time at Friends Colony, you know? Yeah, yeah. the reason I would yeah. come is not even to gist. I just want to be looking at you in real <laughs> life, being the wife to PD. And you know, PD is like a really different weird person like me. Like he just wants to be at home, just yeah. alone in his study, which is what I want to do with my life. I just want that's to be alone. <laughs> you know, so, so yeah. So that's just to say that um, what makes me go deep, but within boundaries is the balance between how I want to impart others with wisdom and grace without violating the boundaries of what I treasure and what is not out for consumption. And right. that's, not, that's not tough at all because there are things that are good enough for you know, sons and daughters to hear and have access to, but does not touch the boundaries of what you still you know, prefer to keep private, right? So yeah, so that's a, that's that's a right. second reason that that's right. mentorship is really about a vulnerable exchange of life and an importation of, of that which is personal or that which you are modeling, right? Uh, but without also straining your privacy. Um, yes, yeah, so right. that's, that's, that's a second one. Of course, for, for daughters and sons who are within a different cadre in my life again, they even know yet more. Do you understand? Yeah. So yeah. there is yeah. so there are yeah. those cycles of access. And then the that's final right. thing is honor is the currency of greatness. Yeah. Honor yeah. is the currency yeah. of greatness. Like that's right. That's what right. You, what you you know admire is what you attract, what you respect that's right. is what responds to you. So That's for right. sure, I'm always going to be someone who loves to honor of others. Um, and the thing it's about great, honor yeah. is that there is no one way to honor. The best way to honor mm. is to bestow on others the finest gift. Some people are givers of, of mm. gifts, like material gifts, and do that. Some people are givers yeah. of words. That's my finest words. gift. So to honor others is mm. to bestow your highest gift on them. You That's know? it. Yeah, I That's it. I can do those cooking, like, uh, uh, let me host you to the party, but I can honor you genuinely with the gift of words, you know. And words, be present when you awesome. Meet. Yeah. Awesome. And I see you do that even for your big daddy up there. You honor him a lot with your words. So yeah, that's yes. you, that's you, that's you. Thank you, thank you. One question and then one more question. Um, have you ever experienced low down moments moments where you felt like giving up moments where you felt like am i really doing what i should do moments where you felt like you were alone how did you manage those moments what practical things did you do to get out of such moments yeah yeah <laughs> yes absolutely so people, this is funny. I get asked this question a lot that I, I, I started to feel that maybe I sort of come across like such a strong person. You've got it all together. <laughs> like you're so strong. You're always yeah. so smiling. All your videos are looking so pim and, you know, pang and everything is just looking all put together. Like you saying you have a three-year-old or how old is that young woman? You doesn't look like it. Like, I, I listened to one of your videos and you yes. were talking about how you want to get them ready for Sunday service and how you're having a conversation with them and trying to tell them, you know, we need to get to church early, you know, and I was just laughing that you had to just switch to the, the back by Labara. You enter that bathroom and just, you know. <laughs> so really, you look like you don't do all those things. Like you just come out and you're like, like you came out from a magazine, like, you know, Hallelujah. I like just paying like that. <laughs> Oh God, most time. <laughs> so honestly, I, I would like to know. <laughs> okay, that's that's a great thing to talk about. Um, yeah, so I do have 
those moments. Um, in fact, I am just learning maybe in the last three months to really, really live without Moradi Balogo, for example. Mm. <laughs> like, mm. really, then almost like someone who has been using a crutch and then is now learning to work and it's tough, mm. it's hard, mm. it's, it's painful, right? Mm. Um, so I would say, for example, from December to maybe June, I was crying almost every day. Wow. See? Yeah, but I wow. mean, I, I was the one who ministered at her, um, at the service that we had in her house after she transited, you know, and I had people coming to me and they were like, sorry, what kind of strength is this? Most tight. And I was just like, please let me enter my car so I can go and cry. All these things that I'm holding <laughs> into my body, too much of my soul, you know. Wow. Um, yeah, so yeah, so that, that's an example of just even almost questioning everything that you believe because it happened right mm. after a conference that was, I mean, I don't know anything that was more powerful in terms of what God had carried me through to do in ministry and all of that. And it was definitely like a very obvious assault, you, you know. And I had I felt all the emotion. I was not just um, dealing with loss. I was also dealing with enormous anger that you are mad. Like Satan, you are mad. You are mad. Like, I'm going to show you. What? You're a bastard. <laughs> hey, but you are mad. So it was everything. It was, it was everything. And then also asking questions because I saw things and took steps and prayed and said this mm. to her and all that. Mm. So, yeah, do I have those moments? Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, but I must say this to you up front. Mm. How do I say this in a way that is also right? Pimo, you need to have your company. Yeah. And yeah, and it is your company that should have access yeah. to certain you. So what? Yeah. What do I do with it? Yeah. I, I cry, I come out and cry, and I say it's so tough. It it that's not a blessing, that's not a ministry. It's mm. not and mm. so someone looks at you mm. and feels like she's always trying to form strong. That's not the point. I'm not trying to form strong. I yeah. am weak yeah. in the context of yeah. me that yeah. way. Yeah. Ministry. I remember how you broke down blessing. when I came to church too. Exactly. Exactly. Right there. Do you see? You lost your mom. It was so tough. I came to meet you right at the hospital. I feel like that was such a such a precious, precious, vulnerable moment. But you're not going to come to church the next Sunday and start wailing. It doesn't <laughs> serve anyone. Yeah, people, yeah. People try to, people almost try to, there's something it's called. It's called a strong shaming. They try to shame strong mm. people and try to make it mm. feel like, hmm, you are always trying to know. Uh, you just have to know mm. the country. You just have to know your That's company. Right. And in my company, that's I'm right. Telling you, do you know what I mean? That's right. My director. Wow, so true. In DIW, they were, they were, they were just. I could see the extra effort. I want to tell them, can you chill? I'm actually okay. They were taking turns checking mm. on me. If it was annoying and creepy, hello, mom. How far? How are you? You know, I'm right here. If you need anything, I want to say, yeah, come now. Fly from Abuja and <laughs> come to Lekki if I need anything. <laughs> my friend, only to see them just being like, I'm here. I'm here. I'm here praying all night round, praying all morning long. That's my context. Those, that's my company. Mm. Do you see? I'll go to my own friends, my spiritual leaders. Yeah, you came to church. I knew that I can't follow you to Maryland. So let me be crying the cry. And I broke down like this, <laughs> Pimo, this is too hard. It's too hard. Mm. So don't let anyone strong shame you. Do I have those moments? Yeah. Absolutely. Have I gone through yeah. extreme down seasons? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. So that's just to say, yeah, be vulnerable in your company. Have your company. You are only in danger right. if you don't have your company. But don't let anyone that's right. shame you. You know, strong is not right. wrong. That's right. So that's right. Now, say, why do? 
um, when I'm there, I do what the Bible encourages us to do. <laughs> Number one, mm. I pour out my the afflictions of my soul on the Lord. I pour it out. I don't. I do yeah. like David. I I make my sounds. I don't say if I don't. I don't always say, Lord, you are faithful and true. Sometimes I'll be like, <laughs> Where are you? I feel forsaken. Yeah, yeah. Mm. I'm like, I mm. need you. Extra assurance, you know. Yeah, that's right. So I write it. I pour that's the right. of my soul. Do you see? I do that. I also wow. um, do not. I do not hide myself from those who can help me. So I've spoken about my company. I reach out. That's to right. Them. You better be praying. Yeah. So I am mass intercessors. I that's talk right. To them about where I need help. Mm. I go to my spiritual leaders. I was mm. constantly calling them, saying. How have you lost a member in ministry before? This has never happened to me. So mm. talk to me. And she was not mm. just my mother, she was mm. my kid. Like this was yeah, this was the person that kept my life organized, literally. Wow. I'm like, please, can you talk to me? What's going how even if they tell me and tomorrow I still feel like I want to ask again, I'll ask again, and they'll patiently repeat it. Yeah. And I will still ask. You yeah. Know, if I get cynical, I will be cynical up front. I'll be like, hmm, oh, wow, I don't believe that. So I would, yeah. Yeah, we'll just do that, right? But the biggest thing that I do is I offer a sacrifice of praise. That's where my mm. healing always is. I will go beyond mm. pain and in the pain. In fact, I, I'll be saying in my heart, like, I don't, I don't go through pain a lot as much as many people go through. So this time, let Jesus mm. know that my pain cannot divorce me from my love for him. You know, so I will press wow. pain that pain and i will adore him i will bring my best worship i will write and i will read it out you are my god you are worthy to be praised you are deserving of my highest mm. adoration. i belong to you eternally you will bring me through the valley of the shadow mm. of death i will be singing your praise in the mm. morning my story will be an encouragement mm. to i will declare i will declare in that pain i will be crying i'll be feeling it in my stomach but i will declare wow I will. And then mm. the final thing is never, ever, 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 as long as it gives you breath, must you make your pain an excuse for, for wow. abandoning purpose. I wow. serve him. Wow. I serve him. Wow. Yeah, a few days after wow. that loss, I was preaching. Yeah. And it wasn't that I was in denial. I drove myself back home, packed in the, in the, in the uh, garage, and then still cried. But I will serve in pain. I would serve in my discomfort. If he gives me an instruction, I will still obey it in the midst of that. Yeah. So for sure, those are things that definitely help me. Much. Thank you so much for that. Lastly, uh, we've had such an amazing time with you, honestly. And for everyone that has tuned in, that registered, you're going to get the audio of this, all the sessions, both sessions, you're going to get the audio it was sent to you. And of course, with all the resources and materials DDK mentioned, the last question someone asked that, can you be, can you please talk a bit about being a lover and being a wife? So we're going to wrap it up there. Being a lover and being a wife. Hmm. Did you get that? Uh, I'm not going to talk about sex that much because we will not leave, you know, we won't leave and, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and it deserves a master class. So maybe if you can toast Pimo, maybe we can have a session in November or something. It deserves mm. a master class because there's a whole methodology, right? But let me share with you from my heart about being a wife and being a lover. Um, the first that I know is important is <laughs> love <laughs> is equivalent to the cross. Love mm. is equivalent to the cross. And I'm going to speak about that from two key points of view. The first is that your capacity to love is directly proportional to how much of Christ you are maturing into. The more you mature into wow. Christ, the more you can love. Mm. And that is why mm. some of the greatest so true. Stories, yes, mom. So that true. It's just is is powerful. I'm That's so you. true. In fact, if we knew early, we would have just been growing our spirituality as we are growing yeah. our marriage. We will not be yeah. we will not be going to marriage seminars first. You didn't have a business mm. in school. 
honestly, honestly. Life. And they will now make you feel guilty as if you're a bad wife. <laughs> you would be hearing things that you are just like, what, which man? Is it this one that is doing like this? Has he done it? All of that. So love is equal to the cross. And the first part of it is the more of Christ that is being that you're maturing into, the more of love you're maturing into in practical terms. I feel like really a successful marriage is a union between two consecrated believers. I didn't say born again Christian, so first can be born again, but there's still canality to when in way, like he's a duplex within your soul. So an excellent marriage is a union between two consecrated believers. And that's the first part of talking about the cross. The second part of talking about the cross is if you are going to mm. be able to love in abundance, you're going to have to die to self. <laughs> yeah. Mm. If you love, will take you to the cross. Wow. And it's going to nail your flesh there. So that's the second part, you know. And, and no matter how amazing your spouse is, it's still going to do that for you. Um, but it's the cross because you are actually anointed and you are full of grace to serving that capacity and to love in that way especially if you are loving, if you are married to the person God ordained for you. And that's a foundation. That's a whole different conversation. It's harder if you are with the person that you chose, but God didn't choose for you. So you're going to have to fund the resource for making that love work. So that's definitely the first thing that I will say about being a great lover. Um, it's really, really matter. Oh, it's first spiritual. And if you recognize that it's first spiritual, you are not going to put your emotion where you should have put your spirit, right? You won't put yeah. your emotions yeah. where it's your spirit that has, should have been operating in that arena. Yeah, so that's definitely the first thing to share with you. The second is that love is a personalized gift from you to your husband. So it's personalized or customized, meaning two things. You give the best of how you are wired to speak to the greatest desires in the heart of the person you're with. Love is, is not a template. Mm. Love is not something you see your pastors doing. I like, I like the way pastor yeah. talks about his wife. Yeah. Or the way he comes mm. mm -mm. mm. mm -mm. So very early in the first, maybe three months of our marriage, I went to minister somewhere. They gave me an honorary room as I was coming home. I was so excited that, wow, I will sow this seed into my husband's life. So I got home and I knelt down and I said, darling, you are my father. And I want to sow this into your life. And he said, mm, I'm not your father. Your father is in a move. Bring the seed up, stand up. Why are you kneeling down for me? Did he really mess me up? I was so upset. Like, how can you even say, I know my father, that my father is in a move? What kind of person is this? But I think he was trying to knock off conditions very early. I don't come and do all those mm, spiritual couple things on me, like, you know, yeah. So in my parents' marriage, father is upset about something, you know, my mom wouldn't speak. But in my marriage, if my husband's upset about something and I don't speak, it will upset him more. He'll be like, don't be quiet on me. Mm. Right? So I have to start talking first that, no, it's not like that. This is what I meant. Because he thinks that you're shutting him out when you're silent. But with my parents, mm. you're how can you talk? That is upset you. For Omar, quiet, no, first. That's the way you say you're sorry. <laughs> you so love, is, love is a personalized gift. It's a personalized mm, gift. Not a Where template. You I love to, that. You look to who you are, what God has given to you, especially if you really believe that your God chose your spouse for you. That it makes it better. Yeah. Me, I know yeah. that God chose my spouse. Because he, he went ahead to even tell me many years after that, Debola, Deji cannot have a better wife than you. So mm. if you allow me to work on you, you are the best deal I have found for him. Everything is looking mm. for is with you. Let me now bring mm. it out. Let me bring it out. Stop all this funding yeah. and stop all this hardness. Be tender in my hand so I can flow through you and satisfy mm. his deepest spoken desires. So love mm. 
is a personalized gift. It's a personalized gift. And what that means is you, you let God serve the best of you to meet the deepest needs in your spouse. Mm. Meaning that to mm. love them excellently, you have to study them intently. To love them excellently, you have to study them intently. Omar can be with mm. And that's still the whole mystery around amazing sexual sexual experiences. Do you understand? I know, I know what to do to take my husband from one to zero in 10 minutes. I know it. I'm bad like that. Damn. No kidding. Bad I know what to do if I want to bring it down, if I want to <laughs> make the tempo chilled. I know if I want to make it fire, that everywhere will be burning. Yeah, I know. Because ah. I studied it. I studied it. I do. What was my work in this, my life, if I can't study that? <laughs> what I, do? What was, I don't understand, though, personally, maybe because me, oh, I really want to enjoy marriage. I want that, whoa. Every encounter must be, must be a memory. You know? so I'm sorry, I'm sorry about this. Praise thing. God. I'm going to focus now. I want to keep it spiritual for the single people. But here's the deal. If you don't study <laughs> your partner intently, you're going to be, in fact, let me tell you, if you're not studying your partner to love your partner, you are loving your partner with a template. Both of you are just managing yourselves. And yeah. they deserve stuff from you. Yeah. Many of the things they're looking for outside is inside your shokoto, but you're going to sokoto for it. Yeah. So I've had on many things. Yeah. You know, so for example, let me tell you, when I enter into the space that my husband is, his eyes, they lit up. They lit up. And I'll be teasing him like, ah, ah, you are so addicted to the bullet. What? See the way I behave in. Because his biggest love language is just give me attention. Don't buy me any gifts. Mm. Just be there. We were just to 2.30 a.m. I'll be dozing up. I'll be almost begging that. Stop this thing now. I want to go and say, Jensai, 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 I believe it, babe. People think it's gender, but he will be gisting, gisting. Although he said, he will enter some places I said that he will gist me rich. But it's really knowing that that's, that's, that's what is the heart cry. There's a signature in the soul mm. of your man. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. I will not be loving the yeah. guy like, you want to love him specifically. Yeah. And that's going to be enough. Yeah. You see? Yeah, and then yeah, yeah. The final thing I want to share with you is you need to also practice singleness. You know, many people, when they're single, were never single. So they were in singlehood, but they were never in singleness. Meaning that even though, That's they, right. were, um, even though they were not in, they were not married by a marital status, they were always emotionally encumbered. All this yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, entanglement. Yes, always looking for other people to mm -hmm. validate. So ma many women, yeah, married still with that desire to just always be entangled and to just be encumbered because they don't know how to be by them. Mm. I tell you what, I'm going to use this wow. word here, and I hope that you get it because you know that I love Jesus. There's something exotically sexy about a woman who loves herself enough to sometimes just be like, I don't even know how to describe the thing. Marriage is not meant to be an escape from your life. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, preach it. Love to love preach it. you enough. Wow, so good. You, know, you are always just going to be using marriage to meet, mm. you know, needs in your life that marriage cannot meet. There are needs That's that were right. to Jesus. The reason you're unable to love well is because the things that have for Jesus, you are trying for your husband to do them. And no matter how hard he tries, he's going to do a poor job of it. And it's going to weaken your rest mm. of teaching. Let me tell you this thing. That's right. The way I understand it, that Jesus is teaching me. Because I am putting focus where focus is due. And I am asking my husband to show up for me emotionally in the places where he has capacity to. He's able to be a first class husband. Because what I'm asking of him are things that he is anointed to do. Even though, if in the beginning, if in the comfort zone. Do you understand? 
He's anointed to meet my emotional needs, but he's not anointed to fix my broken places. So marriage, like CAD Sync Consult is saying to us, I think this is a good tweetable moment, marriage won't solve your inadequacies. You need to practice the principle of singleness, loving you, growing your sense of identity, yeah. enjoying yeah. being by yourself, yeah. and having a yeah. beautiful yeah. personal life where, yeah, you can take yourself yes. out and be okay with it. Yes. And you're not always living in for yes. your husband to do everything and be everything yes. because he can't. Right? So if you take yes. those things yes. out of the way, they will heal you of the things that mm. are holding you back. Mm. Mm. Wow. Wow. So profound, Debola. So profound. As in so, 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 so profound. I am an advocate for singleness, even in marriage. Because in marriage. we are just too... We are too choked up. We are too choked yes. up. Koriko sun, koriko yes. omu. You know, and like you said, we ah. often think that marriage will deliver to us certain things. It's like an escaped uh, route for us. Like, let me just escape into that marriage and you get lost in it. And when your expectations are not met, you slide, you gradually slide into depression because you're always waiting for someone to, you know, you said something really profound. Uh, about there's something about someone just loving herself, self love. I mean, you look at the mirror and you're like, ah, ah, I'm on Dubai. Like, you celebrate yourself. You're so excited about who you are. And it's not pride. It's not, you know, over loving yourself. I don't think you can over love yourself, but just celebrating God's goodness, you know, in your life and just enjoying all that God is doing in you and through you at every different stage and every different season. So, Debola, thank you so much for that. Wow, we've spent two and a half hours and it's like we shouldn't stop but of course uh, we know that uh, data is running for some people so we would have to you know make it a wrap but if there's something i'm going to say to summarize ddk with all that we've heard today is that ddk is unashamedly a lover of god and that is what has produced everything that we see that she's doing, that she's talking about. She's unashamedly a lover of God, unashamedly in love with Jesus. I love how you talk about prayer. I love how you talk about your connection and uh, 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 having expo from the Holy Spirit, how the Holy Spirit gives you expo. And that is a function of relationship, God's relationship with you how much he values it and how much he values you and how much you value him. And I think that is the summation, honestly, the summation of everything. And I just want to say thank you. Thank you, DDK, for coming on this platform. Uh, you version Leading Women Conference 2020 first season was the bomb. And I can see people commenting, saying, DDK, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you so much. It's it's been such an amazing time with you. I mean, such an amazing time. Loaded with wisdom. I am not disappointed. I couldn't even have been. I wasn't prepared to be disappointed anyway. So, yeah, uh, I'm grateful for that, you know, opportunity. Thank you so much. God bless you. God bless you real good. Everyone, uh, for about a minute, can we just unmute everyone and just say thank you, DDK. Hey. Just unmute everyone for about a minute Thank and you, scream it. Thank you, DDK. I love you. Thank you so much, Mom. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you so much, DDK. Thank you, Pimo. Thank you, Pimo. Thank you. Pimo, you are the best guy. Pimo, 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 all the way. We love you. Thank you. Pimo. You thank you. Special. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mom. Mute now, thank you. Thank you. Love you. Thank you. All right. So, yeah, I'm back. So, thank you, DDK. And, uh, God bless you. I think I can release you at this point. Thank you so much. 
I will slide into your DM. I'll give you a call right after now. Thank you so much. Love you so much. God bless you. Thank you so much. All right. Uh, it's been such an amazing uh, meeting. If this is your first time tuning in to Leading Women Conference, I mean, you are blessed. And this is just the first season. Tomorrow, we are having Mrs. B, the authentic Mrs. B, the one and only beautiful, amazing wife of Dr. Tunde Bakari. You don't want to miss it. It's happening 6 p.m. tomorrow. So I'm just going to hand over now to Amaka Sin, and uh, she would give us a few announcements, and then we would call it a wrap. Thank you for your patience. We were targeting two hours, but I know that it was worth your time, and you had an amazing time. I'm looking forward to seeing you all uh, tomorrow. But before, but before that, that, at the end, end of everything, end of everything we, are going we are going to, to be... be uh, um, Saying our hello, we're going to do faff after now. So, you know, just don't rush out yet, please, if you still have data. Over to Amakasin, quickly. Thank you. Hello, hello, everyone. Good evening. Today has been so amazing. Gosh. GDK is such a wise woman. I can't even, my, my note is full. Anyway, because of time, let me just rush in. So this is the Leading Women Conference. What we do basically, one organization that is aimed at nurturing leading women into the exact sphere of influence that God has called them to. We, the goal is to basically just impact women in ministry into being full definitions of what, of the, of the calling of God upon their lives. And we started in 2018. Since then, we have grown. We've had about five conferences up until now. Powerful, amazing conferences. Um, you can follow us on Instagram at Leading Women Conference. On Facebook, the same Leading Women Conference. You can send us an email if you have questions, if you want to partner with us, if you want to you know, know more about us, basically just get inquiries. You can, you can send us a mail at leadingwomen2018 at gmail.com. Leadingwomen2018 at gmail.com. Thank you so much. We are so glad that you could join us today. I am positive that you have been tremendously blessed because I have been. And so right now I will hand it over to Chinelo, so, you know, round things up. Thank you so much. So, so just like uh, Mama Kat said, um, there's going to be a program tomorrow. So, so officially, the Leading Women Conference, we are opening officially our partnership forum. And then I want to just clap, 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 clap. So actually what it entails is that like um, you're partnering with our ministry and as you want to partner, you're lending your service and resources to impart the kingdom and your generous seed soon will yield manifest returns of transformed lives and women set on course and on fire for God and the kingdom. Also, as you can expect, your partnership can also bring exclusive benefits to you. So we have different um, three tiers of partnership, um, the covenant, the impact, and the connect. And each of them will come with different monthly pledges as well as benefits. So I'm going to be posting a link in the chat group now. If you want to become um, a partner of um, Leading Women Conference, please feel free to fill the form I just sent to the chat group now. And also we encourage you to consider this because you know a lot, of, a lot is going to be happening. From next year, we'll be having quarterly program. So which means our programs are going to be four times in a year. So feel free to partner with us and um, um, fill up the link and so that we'll take the process from there. We'll get back to you in respect to that. Thank you so much. And we we'll look forward to hearing from you soon. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. 
Thank you, Chinelo. Ah, thank you, everyone. It's been such an amazing evening. I can see my dear sister, Pastor Debola Lemoshe. Thank you for tuning in. Pastor Delapo, thank you one more time. Thank you, uh, my dear sister, covenant sister, Frances. I can see a whole lot of people. Toby Owoyele, thank you, Efe. Thank you, thank you. Oh, Mrs. B is still online. Thank you, Mama, for staying through. We're looking forward to tomorrow. It's going to be awesome midday. Thank you. Molu midday, Olu Shola. I mean, Olu Sheye. I'm just blessed. I'm surrounded. I'm, 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 I'm blessed. I'm surrounded with a lot of people. Auntie Lanley is online. Thank you. Wow. For such great support. Thank you, Tosi. Thank you, Nene. Thank you, Sister Fumi. Ashaolu. Thank you so much, Mary Jane. I mean, I wish I could call everybody's name. Debbie. Oluwatosi, Adebola Mudi, everyone, Karen, everyone who came supporting DDK, everyone who came just to be a part of this. I love you all. Everyone, Ife Oluwa, thank you. Our amazing moderator. Thank you. Mojisola Ojofeyi. Wow, Zainab, so many names. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, guys. I love you all. I celebrate you. Leading Women Conference, we go higher. It's from glory to glory, from grace to grace. And of course, I'm going to thank my husband, for his support and his love. <laughs> and you know, for just uh, pushing us and encouraging us and doing <laughs> thumbs up behind the scene and say, go, 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 go. You know, so it's amazing. Thank you guys. I think we can unmute at this point and just say our. Samuel. <clears throat> Thank you, Pimo. Thank you, Pimo. Thank you, Pimo. Thank you so much. Glad to be a part of this. Thank you, Pimo. Thank you, Pimo. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Pimo. Thank you, Pimo. Most Thank you, Pimo. Samuel. Thank you, Pimo. As we be enlightening, thanks very much for putting this together. I, I really appreciate what I guys do. Mm. Thank, Thank you, Pimo. I had a great time. Thank you so much. Okay, back. Can you? Okay. But everyone is still muted. Thank you, Pimo. I'm so grateful for this privilege. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. What's happening? Thank you, Pimo. We can hear you, actually. OK. <laughs> <laughs> Mode Salah, thank you. I can see you. I can see your picture. Pastor Mata, thank you. Yemi Ajewole, thank you. Ah, Dola, thank you. Feyi Ehireme, thank you. Uluwatosi Oke, thank you. Ewa Uluwa, thank you. Thank you. Tolu Lope Jasmine. Ah, Modela, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Ma Olumide, thank you. Great. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. I am in the root. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you, everyone. Ah, Ola Yoto. Thank you. Thank you. Abisala Ogun today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, I can see my friend Francis. Thank you. Oh yeah, you guys put on your camera around now. Thanks, Pimo. I had an awesome time. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you. Oh.
Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Aluchala, thank you. Okay, in the house. Yes, so thank you, Debbie. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. Thank you. I love you all. I see you all tomorrow. Thank all you, right. love you too. Thank you, thank you. Good love night. you. Have a beautiful night. Rest. Good night. Too, rest well for those still in the afternoon. Enjoy your day <laughs> and rest you, well in the night. Thank you, everyone. God bless you. See you all tomorrow. Mo, Mo, I can see you. Internet connection is unstable. Blowing you kisses. <laughs> Thank you, people. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> Thanks to my leading women conference team. Oh, wow. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I'll say it to tomorrow, 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 tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you, everyone. Love you all. God bless you. Yeah. I guess we can. Bye. Peace out. The host has to. Yes. Thank you.